What is good, everybody? Today, we are diving into every single WWE Elite figure that was revealed at WrestleMania 40 at the Superstore there in Philadelphia. Man, it was a fantastic time. I had an amazing time and unforgettable experience out in Philly for WrestleMania 40, and it really was just such a blast. Still editing the vlog from that. There's so much footage and so much that goes into that that I'm trying to break down exactly, you know, what to put in the vlog and then how much to do and how many videos to make out of it. So I do apologize for the wait on that, but it is coming. I do want to get that out to you guys, but today. We're diving into the elite figures that were revealed at WrestleMania 40 at the Superstore, and there's been so much figure news that we really haven't even had a chance to talk about or discuss on the channel, and I know we have talked about every Ultimate Edition, but we haven't really grabbed any elite figures or talked about any of the elite figures, and there were so many revealed that we're going to do that here today, man. It should be a long one. Buckle the hell up. Probably going to be similar to a podcast, how long we're going to be sitting here discussing these figures. I have a lot of thoughts. We're going to break down every single figure and every single set that was revealed, man. So with that being said, let's shut the hell up, dive into it, and start things off with the first figure that I want to discuss. And for me, the first figure set that I really want to get into is the ringside exclusive Defining Moment set. Now, last year, we saw Torn Pet Cody. We had Hell in a Cell Mankind. We had Shawn Michaels. We had Brett the Hitman Hart. We had a pretty decent set. Now, this year, I was so excited to get into this set. I talked about it multiple times on the channel, how excited I was for the Defining Moments line. Who's going to be in it? And I got to be real, man. Every single time we get on here, I want to be 100% right there in your face with what I want to say. And I am kind of disappointed in this set. And we're going to dive into all my thoughts here. But let's start things off with the first figure. We do have Pipe Bomb CM Punk. This is easily, for me, the best figure in the set. One that people have been waiting on for so long. I mean, this is probably going to be the first CM Punk that we have in hand since his return to WWE. It's going to be the All-Stars Punk with the updated chest tattoo. It's going to have all of his tattoos on there. It does look like it's the Elite 16 head sculpt. It doesn't look to be a new head sculpt. But he has, like, dark brown hair, which I guess it could be jet black. That's probably I don't know if they're going to change that or what. I don't know how close this is to coming out. I'd guess probably end of summer if I had to guess, but I'm not entirely sure. But you're going to get the Stone Cold shirt. It looked really good on display there at WrestleMania in the case, but you know, this is going to be a figure a long time coming. A figure that a lot of people have been wanting for a long time. It's obviously sold out by now, but this Pipe Bomb CM Punk is very much needed. I was very happy with this one, but I think from here, there's really, I don't know, uh, let's get into the next figure. I think the next best figure in the set is going to be the RVD. Now this RVD, he does come with two different world championships from ECW. I like this gear. It's not my favorite gear of all time, but I do like that it's got the Mr. Monday Night on there. And really the biggest thing about this figure that a lot of people were dreading on is the head sculpt. It looks to be that same Monday Night Wars Elite head sculpt, but I do like that it comes with the ECW championships. You got, you know, your classic world title. I just, I don't know, man. I think his Money in the Bank gear would have been cool with that. You could have given him the signature briefcase, Intercontinental Championship, or maybe you could even throw in the ECW title or the WWE Championship with that, you know, that custom airbrushed RVD Money in the Bank briefcase. I still don't know how we don't have that to this day, but it's not really the figure selection. It's really this head sculpt. This is the same Monday Night Wars head sculpt. Doesn't that. look good. We've discussed this on the channel. It's not a good looking figure in terms of that. I do like that it doesn't have Johnny Gargano syndrome, or at least I don't think so. I don't remember seeing it have Johnny Gargano syndrome, which kind of just pulls into question why the hell the Monday Night Wars Elite has it and this one doesn't. Just very, very strange decision making, but I like this RVD. I'm just definitely going to be head swapping it. I think, you know, you get that head sculpt off of there. It's going to be solid. I love RVD. I love his figures. I really don't have a really big issue with this. I just wish it was a different moment personally, but I still like the figure. I like the titles. I like everything encapsulating this. However, the other two figures in the set, I'm just not big on. Let's start off with Kane, man. This Kane figure here, it's not that it's a bad Kane. I know that people are going to be hyped for this Kane, but we, we have kind of gotten the best version of this that we're going to see, right? His Ultimate Edition is perfect. I don't think that we necessarily needed this, and even if we are getting this, I don't think it really needed to be in the Defining Moments line for me. At least, you know, I know he's got the arm on fire accessory, which is okay. That's cool. I like that. You know, you can do some cool things. The fire extinguisher is okay. He's got a damn WWE logo sculpted on it, which isn't the biggest deal. It's just something to point out there. But, you know, he's got the arm on fire. And then he does come with the four flaming pieces that can go on to the ring post, which is a very cool thing. You know, we've never seen that. You could put that onto your your figure rings, and you can have it where he's doing his entrance, where he's, you know, the pyro comes out of the turnbuckle. I get that. I think that's awesome. But this figure, it's just, I just feel like it fills a hole that doesn't need to be filled in this line. I think that there's so many other people or things they could have done here, and I don't know. It just, it really, it, it just kind of disappointed me, man. I'm really not looking forward to this figure. I just don't think that this is the best version they could have given us here, you know? And it's 
it's got the Ultimate Edition head sculpt. It's a solid figure, but the Ultimate Edition Kane is much better than this, and I just don't get why this would be in this place. I want to know what you guys think. Do you think this should be here? I know a lot of people are going to be hyped for it in certain ways, but in a lot of ways, man, why not just get the Ultimate Edition and call it a day? I don't know why you'd really want to get this version over the other versions. I don't know. This one kind of, this was a head scratch for me, and there's some head scratching figures in this, in this entire video, which we're going to get into, but I want to know what you think about this Kane figure. Next up, we have LA Knight, and this is another one where it's just like, why are we getting this? I, I don't understand what I, I'm, and I like LA Knight. I like LA Knight, right? But this person actually commented on ringside and said, with respect, which is where I'm coming from, with respect, what has LA Knight done that's defining? That is a fantastic question. And somebody replies and says, honestly, with like the shrugging emoji. And I just, I don't think LA Knight's done anything in his career to this point in WWE that's a defining moment. He hasn't, he hasn't done anything that is a defining moment in terms of the rest of these. Has LA Knight done anything close to what the pipe bomb was or anything close or something like that? I just don't think that he has done these things. And so I think that they could have filled this with anything else. So I think that LA Knight and Kane could have been left out of this set. There's way more defining moments that they could have done here with a slew of different talents. There's a ton of different moments that they could have put here. However, in retrospect, I do like the way the figure looks, but he's probably going to have the exact same formula that his Elite 108 figure had. He looks like he's going to be coming with a yeah head sculpt, like he's yelling yeah, which is cool. I like the gear. It's a solid figure. He kind of looks like Jimmy Hart in the face in this render shot, but and he's also going to come with his signature LA Knight hands. But it had to be discussed. It had to be said. It had to be talked about. And I just think that this defining moment set definitely let me down in terms of expectations. But yeah, I had to get on here. I had to start the video off with the defining moment set. I was pretty disappointed. But this is what's funny. Underneath that, with the underneath the comment that says, with respect, what has LA Knight done that's defining? Somebody said, brought me back after not watching since 2001. And he replied, okay, but you're not a defining moment in my opinion. So man just dunked on him. Just freaking just dunked on this man's face. So that was funny to me. But there's our defining moment set. Let's move on to the From the Vault series number two, a set that is pretty solid. There are some head scratchers here, which we'll get into, but let's break down the entire wave. Man, first of all, we do have Paul Heyman from the Tribal Chief versus Beast Incarnate three pack. I don't think this was a necessarily a needed figure here. This figure just came out not too long ago. It also was at a bunch of bargain stores like TJ Maxx and things like this. So I really don't see why that figure had to be needed. I think if maybe they changed the suit color, that would have been cool because then you could pull in people that wanted a different suit color for Paul Heyman or something like that. I think that would have been cool, but I don't know, man. I thought that was kind of a kind of a miss. Like, it's a good figure. It's a really good figure. I just don't think it belongs in the From the Vault series. I think re-release it as, like, I don't know, a Legends figure or something could have been cool, or even, hell, it, 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 like, repaint it and put it in the main line. I think people would have bought that, too, but what do I know, Brad? Let's move on to the next figure in the set. The other head scratcher in the set for me is going to be Rikishi. What's weird about this for me is, like, this is another re-release of this same figure, and I know it's not the exact same, but we had the Hall of Champions, we've had the Elite 27, but then we got Rikishi in the Greatest Hits line, and now in a different Greatest Hits line, they're plugging Rikishi back into it, and he's coming here in Series 2 from the vault, so I think that's another strange decision. I don't know why you would do that when we've already seen this figure again, again, you know? So, I don't know. That, that was another head-scratcher for me. It's not that it's a bad figure. I like the robe or the, the waist wrap and everything. I just, I don't know. It's just an odd decision. I'm just making observations. I just think it's a very odd choice there. So Rikishi being here again makes no sense to me. Uh, the, one of the best figures in the set that I think did need it is the ringside exclusive DX Shawn Michaels here. Now they did change the head sculpt. He's got one of the ultimate heads with the screaming expression. This is a beautiful re-release. This is one that a lot of people missed out on. One that people have been wanting forever. It's double jointed arms. This is fantastic. This is a great, great selection right here. So the DX Shawn is a chef's kiss choice here for this DX Shawn Michaels in the From the Vault series. I think that is a great choice. Another one is going to be Elite 16 Diesel, I think it is. This is a decent one. I think that, you know, this is one that definitely held a lot of high regard. But I think once the once the new Gen Arena Ultimate came out, once the Network Spotlight came out, I think this one kind of lowered in value. But I do know that it's sought after. And it is, it's a good update to have, you know. I think it's a good update to have this gear with the double-jointed arms and everything going on with it. This is a solid re-release. I don't mind this, this being plugged in here. Then we do have the New Age Outlaws. We have DX here with Billy Gunn and Road dog. I think that th these are also solid. You're you're getting another pair of Hall of Champions figures. So the Hall of Champions line apparently was not pushed out or people are just wanting these figures because we are getting Road Dog and Billy Gunn, which I did pay a pretty hefty price for both of these. 
in the aftermarket because I never saw these at retail. So I never had an opportunity to own them. So I'm sure a lot of people are in that same boat. So getting these figures updated with double jointed arms, you're getting DX Velcro less shirts. This is awesome. At least like re-releasing these, they're giving us some cool upgrades. Much like the Shawn Michaels giving us a different head sculpt is awesome. So I do like the inclusion of Billy Gunn and Road Dog here. I, I can get on board with those. I know how expensive those guys were. So I don't have a, a problem with those. Would they be my first choice? No, but I still like that they are including these. Then we do have Undertaker as Kane ringside exclusive unmasking figure here. I never liked that figure to begin with in terms of the head sculpt where he like removes his mask. And they did use that figure's head sculpt on the Ultimate Edition. They used it on the ringside exclusive Biker Taker or SummerSlam Undertaker Elite. So that's never been my favorite head sculpt. I think it's very derpy looking. That forehead's super long. It's not a good head sculpt. So I imagine they're probably going to use that same head sculpt. It's going to be on there again. I didn't, uh, I like that figure. I think it's a cool release because it came with a cane head sculpt and you could make like a two in one. You have like, you know, dual sleeve cane elite, which we had never seen. And then you have, you know, the, the Undertaker unmasked and it came with a, an additional mask that you could remove. I don't know. It's going to be updated with double jointed arms and all the different things. It might be better than the first go around. I just, I don't know if it needed that re-release, but then again, I haven't been searching after it. So you guys can let me know if you think that's a good inclusion. There's so many figures though that they could put in these sets. So it kind of makes it hard. I know some are better than others, but I will stand on the Paul Heyman and the Rikishi should not have been in here. The rest you can make an argument for. Those two, I don't see the argument. So, but the last figure in this set is going to be the Legends No Way Out Eddie Guerrero here. And this figure should be great, man, because I know that they're going to redo the skin tone. It's going to be a better representation. Now, we've already seen an Ultimate Edition of that figure, but that, that, that was Shreddy Guerrero, right? That thing was massive. It looked awful. And now that we're getting this redo here, I think that it should be a lot better. And so this is going to be the last figure. It's going to be Legends Eddie Guerrero, but it is going to be double jointed. It's going to have updated skin tone, much like Dominic Mysterio, stuff like this, and the Monday Night Wars Eddie Guerrero figures. So this should be great. I think this Eddie's going to be a slam dunk, so I'm very much looking forward to the Eddie Guerrero when it comes to our door. So that is from the Vault Series number two. Let me know what you guys think. Do you like this set? Do you think it's trash? I definitely think Series one was much better. I think Series one brought a lot of heat, but I'm hoping in Series three, maybe we get, you know, CM Punk, Straight Edge Society. Maybe we get some other figures like that. I would love to see Ringside Exclusive, Mania 19, Jericho, but he's going to have to sign a Legends deal or come back to WWE or something like that. But I think that'll be something we get in the future. But that would be one I'd like to see too. And then the next set, maybe my favorite thing they show. It's definitely one of them, man. The SmackDown 4-pack featuring Eddie Guerrero, John Cena, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and Booker T. This is a set that I can get on board with, man. The 2-pack that they did with Triple H and Jeff Hardy from around this era, that SmackDown 2-pack, very similar vibes here. Just very nostalgic. That is right up my zone. This, this pack is beautiful. This is one of my favorite things they showed off, man. Now, it's not a perfect set by any stretch, and we'll get into all the different things here, but they did a lot of good things here. They did a lot of good things here. This, this, These are things that I want to see. These are figure sets that I want to see out of Mattel. I want to see these Ruthless Aggression, these early 2000s, you know, right there at the end of the Attitude Era, entering into a new day. This is the kind of, this is the time frame that I would like to see more figures of. God, man, why didn't they give us a fist stage? Jesus Christ. And how did we fail in the Nitro stage? Jesus Christ. But this is a great set. You have two epic moments. And it kind of is like a two epic moments in one, I think, man. You have the parking lot brawl, and then you have the grocery store ass kicking from Stone Cold Steve Austin to Booker T. I mean, dude, this is everything you'd like to see. Now, I think it would have been cool to see Stone Cold come with a, like a milk soaked shirt and a milk sculpt, like, like a face sculpt that has like the milk drenched all over him, you know, from when he's like, a book got milk. I think that would be so beautiful, but maybe we can make a custom of that. I may have to make a custom of that or something. I think that would be really funny, but this is an epic pack. I love this pack. Eddie Guerrero looks great. I like the update skin tone, the face sculpt, like the pissed off short hair, the cheat to win shirt. I still don't like the jeans here. Like Cena's jeans are perfect because he wore those baggy jeans, but I would like to see a better jean sculpt, which we've touched on, but the Booker T looks good. I like the new head sculpt there. The Austin looks great, even though it doesn't have alcohol fueled on the shirt. May have to get a custom shirt on there. I like that they have the watch on there. This is the Stepping Stones, man. This is something that I talked about, which we'll get into later when we get into some Monday Night Wars elites. But Stone Cold Steve Austin in shorts. Been begging for it. Been talking about it on the channel for a while. Getting more there. You get the mustard bottle. You get the milk jug. Oh, man. This is hitting all the feels. I like this. But diving into the John Cena here, I think one little missed detail that they could have done on this John Cena is they could have given him the Tim's boot mold from Elite 6 JTG 
and Shad. That is a missed detail that I think could have really uplifted these figures. I'm definitely going to be doing surgery. I have an extra Shad foot mold that I'm going to use. I'm going to use those feet and put them on here, and it'll be super... It's going to look so sick because it's going to be more accurate. Those That boot mold is based off of some Tim boots, and I'm going to put that on this John Cena, and it's going to really throw it over the top. Gray football gloves is pretty accurate. It, of course, they couldn't put the logos on there and everything, but I like that they're giving them the gray gloves, much like the Rosie and Jamal from the Legends set. I do believe John Cena wore like some Newman football gloves from that time, and those, I mean, for the most part, it's pretty accurate. Now, they can't give him the Brian or Locker jersey, so they did give him the Cena jersey there, but the number font's pretty close. You got some stripes in there. They, I guess they couldn't put orange in there, but this is a time when you use this figure as a base, and then you customize it, you know what I mean? You could get a custom jersey and things like this, but this is still an epic set. I love this set. This is beautiful, man. Absolutely beautiful. They did a great job here. Yeah, this is a Cena that I don't have in my collection that I've been wanting to make, but I never got around to it, so maybe this is the opportunity, man. Fix this one up and then put it on the shelf in the Cena timeline. This is good shish. But then we also have one of the better reveals, I think, and I'm not even a Ninja Turtles guy, man, but the Ninja Turtles Target exclusive set, the WWE crossover. Now, years ago, we did get the Ninja Turtles as WWE superstars, but now all these years later, they have ramped it up, and now it is WWE superstars as Ninja Turtles, and the I love everything about this line, man. This is why we collect right here. Look at all the different details that all these different guys have. I mean, you go through this entire wave. I'm not, Again, I'm not even a big Ninja Turtles guy, man. Like, I like Ninja Turtles. I, di I did like them as a kid and, like, dabbled in it. I love some of the video games and I love the cartoon. Like, the 03 Turtles were my favorite versions of the Turtles. And I did grow up watching the movies from the 90s. But, dude, these are so good. These are so good. I love everything about these. The details and, like, the really cool things. The Cody as Casey Jones is insane, man. You have this cloth goods hoodie that's Velcro-less. The American Nightmare skull mask is insanity. This gear looks sick as hell. I am all aboard these figures. They are so nice. Now, what's cool about these is they're going to be split like three figures in one wave and three in another, and I don't know how they're splitting it up. I don't know who's in what wave and who's in the other, but you have Roman Reigns Shredder, which is just unbelievable. Unbelievable. Man looks like a damn villain. He's got the Roman Reigns tattoo over the eye to simulate Shredder. He's got these sculpted spiked shoulder pads. He's got the gauntlet with the claw on it. He's got this waist wrap. I mean, the Ultimate Edition boots. This is just an absurd figure. I mean, these are going to be some figures that I purchase every single time just because of how cool they are. You got Michelangelo, Kofi Kingston. He's got the nunchucks in there, the orange accents. He's got the shoes. It is based off like Elite 96, Kofi Kingston. But like all these figures are basically repaints of existing figures, but they've added so many bells and whistles that they're insane. Leonardo, Seth Rollins, he comes with the swords, Donatello, Xavier Woods with the pole, Raphael, Rey Mysterio, who also comes with, like, look at the cross where it'd be on his on his mask, and it actually is the sword or the scythe from Raphael. Oh my god in heaven, these are incredible. And again, I'm not even a massive Turtles guy, I just love this. So, I'm gonna definitely be picking up as many of these as possible, and I've actually, I don't think they've revealed this yet, but I have seen the packaging for these, and the packaging is just sick as hell. So, if you just like stuff like this or creativity like this, you're gonna love the package. The packaging is sick as hell, they, they knocked it out of the park, man, so... These are absolutely incredible. Every single figure, I don't really have any gripes with these in any way. Unreal, unreal. I'm gonna be switching some parts and doing some cool things with these. Should be fun, man. Should be fun on some surgery. But now we also have the Legends of the Territory set. Now, we've already known about these, but it was cool to see these in hand, or see not see these in hand, but see these in the case in person. You got the NWA Championship, the WWF Championship. I love the Superstar Billy Graham biceps with the Scott Steiner mold. I love the Muhammad Ali in the suit and everything like that, like the slacks. I just love love that. Very, I don't know, it looks groovy, man. It looks like he could break it down. So, this whole wave looked really, really good. So, I'm excited for this pack. And then we also have the Imperium 2 pack with Ludwig Kaiser and Vinci here. And I do know that, I mean, we're kind of seeing the fallout of this and it's kind of like a curse, you know. But, nonetheless, these figures still look good. And this is going to be an Elite 2 pack on Mattel Creations, I do believe. So, look, all, be on the lookout for these. You can pair it with your Gunther Ultimate Edition, which we know is coming. But, they're still cool figures. I think we do need Elites of these guys. So, it is nice to see. And maybe you can get them and update them if you want or what have you, but this is a good two-pack. I like having Imperium here. And then another huge reveal that we got was the Dudley Boys two-pack. Now, I know that we're going to get many Dudley Boys. I want to say back in the day, there was a couple Dudley Boy Elites in the blue camo that was never released. Not this blue camo, but like later years blue camo, like the like late 90s, early 2000s. And I think the figures ended up getting canceled. And I don't think we've ever really seen a public image of these up in the forefront, but I bet they're probably going to re-release those down the line, maybe in the main line or something. But we know 
we're getting from the vault. We're getting these versions here. They come with the table. Hopefully they come with two tables, but Devon and Bubba Ray, these are early prototypes, but they look sick as hell. Got their overalls in there. I mean, they, these are beautiful, man. I hope that we get more of the Dudley boys, but this was very nice to see. I popped hard when I saw these in person, but you know, not much to look at. They are protos, but I think the sculpts do look nice, and I'm excited to see what they look like when they're finally done. And then we also have the headbangers, which is something that we knew was in the pipeline. Like, we kind of figured it, but seeing them finally on display as an elite two-pack. Now, I do believe Bubba Ray and Devon are going to be a two-pack elite set, and the headbangers are also going to be a two-pack. So, these look crazy. I don't think their shirts had Velcro, from my knowledge. I want to say that they weren't Velcro, but they may be Velcro, actually. I don't, I can't remember off the top of the dome, but they have their necklaces in there. Good expressions. I like the shirts. I like the kilts. These are sick as hell. I like these a lot. A lot of good details here, and they kind of, I mean, they look like they're, for the most part, pretty much finally finished, right? Like, having these in the collection is crazy. Fills a hole in the collection we've had for a very long time. Easy money. I know a lot of people were excited for these, man. I need to do a top 10 favorite reveals from the entire WrestleMania 40 experience. I don't think it's fair to loop in Ultimates with Elites, but these were good. These were damn good. I was very excited to see these, man. But if we keep moving on, we also have the LWO5 pack, which has to be coming very soon. I mean, we know that, you know, seeing them here on display, these look pretty much finished, man. They're pretty close. They gotta be very, very close to being finished, and I don't have a lot of images. I just have one, one image of Ray and Zelina, and then I have an image of the rest of the pack there, and they all look good. I like all the deco. I like all the sculpts. I think the faces are good. The head sculpts are good. The shirts look good. Very good. Very good stuff. All of these are very good, but this is the Mattel Creations LWO5 pack. Now, I did order two of these, one to review and one to leave men on card, I think, so I will be keeping one of these sets on card. I've been kind of collecting the box sets and keeping them in on card. I just like how uniform and nice they look, and they have such good graphics and stuff that, I don't know, we'll see what comes of that, but I wanted to order more, but at 100 bucks, I was like, eh, probably gonna only order two of these, Brad, so I did get two of those, but they look good. I'm excited for the pack. Can't wait to review those, getting a promo, you know, Rey Mysterio, even though it does have Cena shoe mold. Ah, God, that Cena shoe mold makes me want to vomit, but let's move on, man. We have the Survivor Series 2024 Elite set featuring the Bushwhackers that do come with the Doink face makeup. Now, they are gonna come with interchangeable Bushwhackers head sculpt. They're not just going to come with the doink head sculpts. They're going to have interchangeable bushwhackers head sculpts, so you don't have to worry about that. That is good, but these are some figures that I am looking forward to. We haven't seen the bushwhackers in a very long time. It's been a very, very long time since we've seen these guys, and I think this is a good way to get these guys out without putting them in a Legends line or putting them in the From the Vault series, so that's good because those first, that two-pack elites, I used to have those. I think I sold those back in that Legends lot that I talk about. That's like a, the lore of the Legends lot is like a whole thing that I, I sold off a ton of my figures to kind of fund the start of the channel and fund the start of the pick fed. So that was kind of a, that's like a, I don't know, that's like a legendary thing there. I got rid of uh, the Bushwhackers in that set along with all those other Legends figures or throwback figures that I didn't really hold sentimental value for, but still sick, man. Still sick that we're getting these guys and, and we're moving on to the rest of the set. We have Sami Zayn in the War Games gear. Now we kind of figured this, we, you know, we knew when the leak, when the lineup was kind of leaked out there and they were talking about Sami Zayn being in this wave and Kevin Owens being in this wave, we knew that it would be from the War Games and you have your Black Bloodline Sami Zayn here. He's got the red pants in there. It looks good. Honorary Ooze shirt. This is good. Ultimate Edition smiling head sculpt. I think it looks good, man. It looks good. They've repainted this figure over and over. This is fine for me. I know some people wanted it in the Ultimate Edition line, but they think because this is a good, this is a good holder right here. Figure looks about just pretty much what I envisioned. It's kind of crazy. It looks exactly like I thought it would. So there's that. And then we also have Kevin Owens in the pants here with the Dusty Rhodes. Again, exactly what we thought here. Honestly, this might look better than the Ultimate Edition because that Ultimate Edition let me down. But having having a Kevin Owens here in these pants is nice because this could work as a promo gear Kevin Owens. You know, you could acetone the shirt off and put a different design on there. I mean, you could even possibly throw a cloth good shirt over this and make it look like that. But he has the red elbow pad in there, the Dusty Rhodes shirt. Very good stuff, man. I like this Kevin Owens. As a big Kevin Owens guy, I'm down for it. You know, it's it's kind of a moment in time, but it is the Survivor Series line. So it's a Survivor Series figure, man. What do you want? Still using that Elite 101 head sculpt, which I'm not a very big fan of, but you know, you can fix it up with all the different Kevin Owens head sculpts we've been getting, especially with the Ultimate, even though there's really only one head sculpt in that pack that I even like. So I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. But then we're getting into Elite Series 110. and Elite 110, we have Rome. Roman Reigns, and I have talked about this figure, man. This figure disappointed the shish out of me, man. Where the hell is the faded, tapered beard Roman Reigns figure? Still don't have it. Finn Balor and Roman Reigns. I want a faded, tapered beard. The beard's not thicker. There is no fade. The face really doesn't even look like Roman Reigns, to be honest. I don't like this figure. 
Undisputed Championship looks solid, I will say. It does look pretty good. It's got the Roman side plates and everything. It is an elite of pretty much the ultimate, right, with the red boots and everything. Kind of look pink, to be honest, but I don't really care about the that, you know, it's, it's a Roman Reigns. He's going to have the same boots and everything, but if they could put the ultimate boots on the Ninja Turtles Elite, why not put the ultimate boots on this figure right here? I just think that would have been cool, but I don't know, man. Undisputed title. People are going to want it for the Undisputed Championship. It's going to sell because of that, but I was so disappointed in the head sculpt. Just, oh, God. I, still waiting. Still waiting on a nice beard fade thickums looking good Roman Reigns head sculpt. Just not, doesn't exist, man. Doesn't exist, but we also have a look at Pretty Deadly. These figures are kind of underrated to me. I like that, you know, they have these weird expressions. Mattel's kind of in their weird expressions expression era where they're making all these figures with their weird expressions but I kind of like the tights. I like the way that the tights look. I like the way their boots look. Um, I like the cloth goods. And, I mean, it looks like the characters on my TV. And I think they're going to have interchangeable heads. I think they're going to have regular heads and then the uh, the expressive heads. So, there's that. I mean, that's something. But these figures actually look pretty good. I'm actually uh, intrigued with, uh, to review these and see what they're all about. But then we also have Pete Dunn slash Butch in Elite 110. Very much looking forward to this. I kind of am worried about the legs. The legs look very thick in the thigh area. And they're pinless. So, I'm very scared that the legs are going to be very loose and stiff. And hopefully that's not the case, but I'm afraid of it. I am afraid that that's going to be the case. But you do have the regular version in white, and then you have the Chase variant in green. Definitely going to be grabbing both of these. He's got the bat with them. The jersey doesn't look very good. It's a little bit loose there. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be tied on the biceps and fit like a polo tee. So that's kind of disappointing, but I don't really... It doesn't bother me that much, to be honest. But it's definitely something to, to point out and talk about there. But I, I love Pete Dunn, so I'm definitely going to be getting these. Very much looking forward to these guys, but there is Pete Dunn in the regular version and the Chase from Elite Series 110. And we also have Bruno San Martino, which, you know, has a very interesting lore. He's supposed to be a part of the Legends Greatest Hits line, and then they pushed him back to Elite 110. And we're finally getting him here, and that makes Elite 110 have a pretty big wave. I think there's seven figures in Elite 110 because of Bruno San Martino. So it is a repaint of the Elite 25. It's a very good figure, double jointed arms, updated Bruno. A lot of people didn't get that first go around, or they've been missing that first go around, so they will be grabbing this. And he comes with a very sick Hall of Fame podium style deal that you could use in a slew of ways. So, yeah. This is worth the pickup, in my opinion. I wish we also got more Hall of Fame plaques. It's like the only Hall of Fame plaque we've ever gotten. And then we have Elite 110 Austin Theory, which is definitely his best figure. I like the U.S. title. I like the gear here. Brand new torso on this guy. You can't see the full thing, but I think this is a torso that works well for Austin Theory. He's a pretty jacked individual. His arms are a bit small, to be honest. While I don't hate this arm mold for him, I think he could use some bigger arms. So Austin Theory does have a good figure here. I just think his arms could be bigger, but I like the bearded head sculpt. He looks pretty good for an Austin Theory figure. I like this head sculpt better than those expressive head sculpts we saw in his Elite 102 figure a year ago. So I definitely like the Elite 110 Austin Theory. And then we do have the Elite 110 Rhea Ripley, which is easily her best figure. Not even close. You get the mommy choker necklace. You have the white attire with the purple accents, the white boots. You guys know I love white gear, but the only thing that I wish they would have done is I wish they would have given us a Rhea Ripley with the sternum tattoo. I'd like to see a Rhea Ripley figure that has all of her tattoos featured on the figure. And so I will, I don't know what I can do really. I mean, there may be a way to, to do like a, I don't know, like a lower torso piece, like the stomach. If you put like a blank one in there and then put this Elite 110 top on it, and then you could put the sternum tattoo onto the stomach, and then it would be like her, you know, her attire is split. I don't know if that'll be something that is possible, but this figure looks amazing. Can't wait for the Elite 110 Rhea. The shoulders are broader. They actually captured, like, how muscular, you know, how big she is, how muscular she is, so they did a really good job here. Looking forward to the Elite 110 Rhea Ripley. Even if the championship's outdated, it is from a moment in time, so there's that. But we're moving on to Elite 111, and we do have Trish Stratus, who finally, finally has a good figure since Elite 24. She has not had a good figure since Elite 24. Four. And she has the fur coat in here with the cowboy hat. Good looking head sculpt. I think this is from her run last year or 2023, which was a solid run. I like the hair piece. I think this has good likeness to Trish Stratus. So this is really all you can ask for, but should be a lot better than her other figures she's been getting lately. So hopefully this Trish will check all your boxes for you there. But the big shocker was the damn Sandman. Now it wasn't, it was not a shocker in terms of not knowing we weren't getting him. You know, it's been out there a while that we're going to be getting a Sandman, but the attires that they went with are very cool. I will say I'm probably probably going to have to buy a few of these to kind of make like I do want to make like a black pants version with the iconic Sandman shirt. I think they wanted to put that shirt into the line, but they something about they couldn't get it approved or they couldn't find something about they didn't know exactly who owned it. And so it was tough to get it approved or something like that. So I don't know there, but you could get a custom shirt made for the Sandman and the head sculpt's not the greatest of all time. 
at certain angles, I like the Sandman head sculpt, and then at certain angles, I don't like it. But there's way to, ways to fix this up. I don't like that he has the John Cena shoe mold, obviously. But again, that's why I, I like this figure like this. I'm definitely going to be adding a bunch of different Sandman figures to the collection because I'm going to be grabbing this. I want the Chase variant in the Rex Quando attire is what I'm going to be calling it. But he's got the damn Shaq Gnosis's on, which is crazy, man. He's got the Shaq Gnosis Reebok shoes on, which is such a great detail, even if it is the John Cena shoe mold. So that's such a great detail that they included right there, but he's got the barbed wire, he's got all of his beer cans, solid looking head sculpt, I, th I think it's gonna be fine, like the arms are a bit jalla, we're gonna have to fix him up, we're definitely gonna have to fix him up, but I am, I'm very much excited for this Sandman, absolutely, definitely looking forward to the Sandman figure, a guy I've been wanting on the line a long time, and even if we have to fix him up completely, we'll have to do so, but I'm, I'm just happy to finally have a Sandman here. But then we also have a look at Ricochet, and I like this Ricochet a lot, I love the gear, I love the entrance shirt, or entrance vest here it kind of looks like the buffalo bills or something going on with it but it's a good looking figure i like the figure head to toe except for the damn johnny gargano syndrome man johnny gargano syndrome bites again here in his kick pads you can't really see him at this angle but he does have johnny gargano syndrome gonna have to fix him up in some capacity I don't know exactly what we're going to do there, but we will have to fix his kick pads. I guess we're going to have to give him like solid red or, you know, like we'll have to change his kick pads out. Like there's no long kick pads that have this same pattern, but we'll do something. We'll definitely do something to him. But I do like this ricochet though. It's a cool ricochet, cool ricochet figure. The best part about it is the entrance vest though. But we also have Tony D here with his track suit. Very cool figure. I like it. I like this new leg mold that we're going on here. You can see that the cuffs are kind of hugging the shoe mold there. And again, it is John Cena shoe mold, which makes me want to Vomit, but at least we do have a new leg mold here, which hopefully is articulated well, and there's a way to kind of fix up some other figures and things like this, but I love the, the track jacket. It's great, great cloth goods on here. I like the hat. I like the likeness. I think it does a pretty solid job there. Elite 111 is kind of an underrated set, man. I'm, I'm liking Elite 111 so far, but the cloth goods here are fantastic. And then we also have Finn Balor here, which again, man, I mean, it's a repaint of his Elite 107. A lot to unpack with this figure. It's a SummerSlam gear versus Seth Rollins. I like this figure. I like that they're changing it up. It's not the exact same gear as his Elite 107, but it's that damn leg mold. It's going to make him way too small, first of all. He's going to be way too short. He's got the John Cena shoe mold. He's got the, like, why are we using this head sculpt? Why not sculpt a brand new head sculpt and put it on there, man? I like the jacket. I like the attire they went with. It's just the formula that's all jacked. This head sculpt has been around since Elite 70. Elite 70 Demon Finn Balor. The Jack the Ripper head sculpt is what this is. And they repainted it, which we've already seen it repainted in some basic figures before. So doing that again here makes no sense. They should have gave him the faded beard again. Been waiting on that for years. Still haven't seen it. So, oh man. A new Finn Balor head sculpt would have done wonders right here. But he did recently re-sign with the company. So hopefully in that time, we'll get a Damn, we'll get a head sculpt that fits him correctly and is is the right sculpt and coloration and everything like that. But as a Finn Balor guy, I am always hyped for a Finn Balor figure. It just has to be talked about with the lack of the the tapered beards, man. The thicker beards, like these beards are not accurate. The the faces are not accurate. So these are things that keep me up at night. So there's the Finn Balor. But we also have a look at I think this is Elite Cody Rhodes in the white gear. I think this is from his match with Brock Lesnar at Backlash. Now, I do not like this head sculpt. I love the gear. The gear's fantastic. I like that there's no knee pads. So, I do like the white attire Cody that's going to be, you know, no torn pec and it is white attire. So, that is good. I am seeing that his legs are pinless, it looks like. So, that's going to be the first time we're seeing that out of a Cody figure. The Ninja Turtles Cody also is pinless. So, I guess we're just going to have to beware because his figures have felt so good in the hand. Now I'm worried that these are not going to feel as good in hand because they're going to feel so tight and hopefully that doesn't happen. But I am I am looking forward to this figure because it is a Cody. I love Cody and I love that, you know, we're getting a new attire and everything. It's just the tattoos on the face still. Definitely need to fix that. It's not that close to the ear. We've covered it at nauseum. And then the head sculpt's not that good. It's like his li lips are like pierced. It's like his... He's like, what do you call that? Is it piercing lips or pursing lips? I don't know what it's called, but it's like he's like, I don't know, tucking his lips in or something, which is kind of weird. It's just not a good head sculpt. Another, oh man, between the straight face and this one, it's like, damn, can we just, like, I, like obviously we have other head sculpts that work for Cody, but just give us the Defining Moments head sculpt, man. Give us the Defining Moments head sculpt. Paint it that way and put it on every Elite going forward and I'll be happy. But also in Elite 112, we do have JD McDouble and he looks pretty good. JD McCrispy with the nice entrance gear. He does have JD on his shirt, which could use for Judgment Day. Now this is in green gear, so it's not his Judgment Day attire, but he is going to come with an alternate head sculpt. You have like a ponytail 
head sculpt and the hair down, which is good. It is our first look at JD here in the line, and I like it. It's a good figure. You could easily repaint it or do something if you want a Judgment Day gear, or just leave his entrance garb on and switch out the knee pads, and you have a, a Judgment Day, or you'd have no green. You'd have, you know, you could use your imagination to be white and black or purple or whatever, but it's a good looking figure. We definitely needed JD in the line, so getting him here first time in the line looks good. I'm glad you know, that we have this here. And we also have Becky Lynch from Elite 112, which looks pretty good. I don't like the head sculpt, though. I'm definitely going to be head swapping it, but I do like the gear. I like the gear they went with. It is a different take. She still has the damn basic boots on there, which is very annoying. I don't like that all these women's figures have basic boots. I don't know why they do that either. There's, I mean, I know that other things may take priority in terms of making new sculpts, but I'm pretty sure you could have put, there's some kick pads out there that exist that they could have put on here that work. And even if there's not, we just need to, we need to let these, you know, phase on out, phase these basic boots out between Bailey and Elite 109, this Elite 112 Becky. They've been around a long time, man. They, like, this same kick pad mold has been used for like 50 series or something like that. It's, it may have even been longer, so definitely need to phase those out at some point and just get it over with. But the gear does look good. I like this Becky figure besides the head skull. We'll be switching that. And she does have a chase variant in this like brown gear, which I don't like. I don't like flesh colored gears, you know what I mean? Like the fleshy tone. I mean, it looks like she's wearing nothing kind of in the render shot. So there's that. And then we do have Elite 112 Bray Wyatt. I'm definitely looking forward to the Bray Wyatt. This is the canceled Greatest Hits figure and canceled Epic Moments act from the Mower of Lawn and the Matt Hardy, you know, Ultimate Deletion set. So this figure kind of has like a, a long history of getting pushed back. So I'm hoping that this will be the time we finally get it. Now I know it's not in red, it is in tan, but I like the way this figure looks. We've seen this figure in prototype form, and it looks good. I'm looking forward to this Bray Wyatt figure. And we also have Seth Rollins, another damn black and gold gear. Jesus in heaven, can we get away from black and gold? This man has like 25 black and gold figures. The last seven have been in black attire. Are they incapable of giving him a colorful gear? Out of all the gears that this man has worn, and every time we get it, it's in the black and gold. At least if you're going to do black and gold, give us the white one from... I don't even know what atti attire it was or what event it was, but remember it was like the white. It was like mainly white and it had accents of black and gold with the SR. That would have been much better. I think they're putting it in the basic line, though. And then they're putting the blue and cheetah in the basic line, too. Like, switch these attires, man. This would have been a fine basic. And now we're getting in elite form. So, oh, man. There's just all these different things, man. But there's Elite 112 Seth Rollins. It's another Seth Rollins. I love Seth Rollins. It's just something that has to be mentioned. Hopefully, he comes with cloth goods. Then we also have Channing Lorenzo here, looking pretty good. This looks to be like a new leg mold, which looks pretty good. Obviously, it's just a render shot, so it's kind of difficult to judge, but for the most part, it looks pretty good. I'm, you know, excited to have... Anytime we get new faces in the line, I'm always intrigued to see exactly how they pan out and see if they're any good. And also in Elite 112, we do have Xavier Woods. I like this gear a lot. I love the blue in here. I think that these kick pads could also be possibly used on some other talents as well. So, you know, other things, you can make like some fantasy gears or some cool fix-ups and swaps if you pay attention of that but very cool i like the updated head sculpt i like this new torso it looks like or maybe the same torso but i think they're also giving that to our truth down the line but this is a good looking xavier woods i like this one a lot two different xavier woods that we actually got over the weekend there and then we have a long time coming elite 113 carlito and he is the chase in the purple so great base for a throwback carlito that you could use in the purple and then you do have the white gear the cream looking gear there that looks very sick. I love this Carlito. I love the purple one. Both of these look good. I like the torso choice. Great looking formula here. Great looking head sculpt. Comes with the apple. I don't know if this apple is going to be loose or it's actually going to be sculpted into his hand. I hope that it's loose, but I'm not holding my breath. I feel like the apple would be separate if he came with one. Or maybe he's coming with a apple in hand head sculpt and, you know, a, a loose apple. But if he doesn't have an apple chewing head sculpt or biting head sculpt, it's going to be weird. I just, I just think that's something that they need. You know, you need a apple biting head sculpt or chewing head sculpt. And then you need a loose apple with a bite taken out of it. That is absolutely something that needs to be a thing. So, Carlito, long time coming. I, I popped hard as hell for this. Loved it. Great looking figure. Much looking forward to it. Another one I'm much looking forward to is Tiffany Stratton here in Elite 113. Now, I will say the head sculpt from here does not look good. This, this render shot does not look good at all. It's kind of nightmare fuel. But I am looking forward to the Tiffany figure, you know? Her basic figure was solid, but I think the Elite will be much better. It's kind of hard to judge because it is just a render shot. But Elite 113 Tiff, hopefully it will be good. I like the gear choice. Hopefully the head sculpt looks better and they capture what she actually looks like. So we will see what comes of that. But Tiffany Stratton getting an Elite is absolute money. But then we move on to Elite 114 and we do have main event Jey Uso here. He does come with the Yeet pants and the Yeet sleeve. 
and it, they don't usually show cloth goods in these render shots so I think all these figures that you're seeing are going to come with some sort of cloth goods so I bet he will come with a yeet shirt and hopefully they go back to the old J Uso torso hopefully this will be the same Usos uh, like if, please God don't give him the damn elite 106 J Uso torso give him the regular Usos torso the Matt Hardy style torso then we have Jimmy Uso great looking head sculpt you got the bandana in there he'll also he'll probably come with a no yeet shirt but look at this leg mold man Look at this new leg mold. I can't tell if this is the Tony D'Angelo leg mold or if this is brand new, but this is what I'm talking about. I like this like tapered jogger looking leg. I think this is going to be a lot better than what we've seen previously. I like the shoe mold. It does look like they're going to give him. Looking forward to Jimmy Uso a lot. This is all in Elite 114, by the way. Jay and Jimmy come in Elite 114, and we also have the final boss, Rock, which is going to come with a cloth goods jacket or vest, and he's going to have the updated tattoo and everything. This is a final boss, Rock. They, do, they have this one like fast-tracked here. So we are getting him in Elite 114. It will be an updated Rock figure with all the bells and whistles. So Final Boss Rock, it'll be one of the gears he wore on SmackDown or Raw. Like with the vest, with the jacket, I don't know exactly which one, but he will have cloth goods and it is going to be a 2024 version of Rock here in Elite Series 114. And then we do also have our truth in Elite Series 114. So 114, Elite 114 is looking like an all-timer set. You have our truth here updated. I can't believe we don't have more our truth. It's kind of abysmal. Hopefully we have a new John Cena shoe mold by then, because I God in heaven, I don't want to see John Cena shoe mold anymore. God, in 2025, man, that should not be a thing. If it, it should be retired. That shoe mold is just abysmal, man. So we need to phase that out too. We need a new shoe mold. We need different shoe molds for different guys that, you know, that are way better than the John Cena shoe mold, but I'm very much looking forward to this R-Truth. And then we do have Elite 115, and the only figure we have from there so far is going to be Kyrie Sane. It looks like she has the same kick pad mold from her Elite 73 figure, which actually was so long ago between sets, but... She looks good. She's got she's got a lot of unique things going on here. So, I'm, I mean, it's just a gray render shot, but it does look good for what it is, and we'll have to see what comes of it. But, yeah, those are the same boots that she had in Elite 73. So, I, I think those kick pads were good. They just didn't have ankle rocker articulation, so that's just something to note there. But then we also have a top talents, Logan Paul. Now, he finally rocked a decent-looking gear at WrestleMania 40. I don't like the black and yellow. And, I mean, even the gear he rocked at Mania was solid. It's just, it was Philadelphia Eagles inspired, so it had, like, the Eagles colorations. But this isn't bad. He kind of, I don't know, it's not terrible. It's not my favorite, though. It is solid. All his figures have been really good. Logan Paul has a good figure track record so far, so there's that. But he is going to be a top picks figure. And then we do have CM Punk's first appearance Elite. Now, this will probably be Elite 115 or something. Elite 115, 116, somewhere in there. It is his first appearance Elite figure. So this is based on a live event from MSG and this will be his first match back so it's just black trunks man apparently these are Cody Rhodes trunks Cody Rhodes lended him a pair of trunks to wear during this live event because his gear I think got he said it got lost or something and so he didn't have any gear so he put on Cody Rhodes trunks and then he does have the leg tats and everything so this is the most up-to-date punk the first up-to-date punk that we're probably going to have in hand before we get the Survivor Series return attire or, you know, promo gear. So this is going to be it, man. It's just going to be plain black. But it is a good base for all of your different attires you want to make. So that's good. You can make a Royal Rumble Elite. You can make all his different gears or hopefully by the time he returns there. So we'll have to see. Then we also have the Survivor Series Made to Order Mattel Creations exclusive pre-order CM Punk here that is already gone. If you guys missed it, you missed it. It did end a couple days ago on April 22nd, but... He does have his shoes in here. He's got the jeans, the skinny jeans with the white tee. This figure did look good in person. It is a really early, early like 3D print. This is not the figure. It's just kind of a, a placeholder or kind of what the figure will look like when it's all said and done. It's like a painted prototype 3D image type deal. 3D printed style statue, essentially. Like, I think if you articulated the arm, it would snap in half. Definitely will be using this on surgery and things like this, so we will be knocking that out. But we also have a look at some Monday Night Wars elites, man. And we do have this DDP, which I think was one of the better reveals of the weekend. This is a figure we've been waiting on for so very long. You have the skinny jeans. You have the rib wrap. It's everything I wanted out of a DDP. Brand new head sculpt. Definitely one of my favorite reveals of the entire weekend. It's got the light jeans in there. Very clean. Very clean. You also have the, the Chase variant in the dark jeans, which is another... I'm fine with that. I'm fine with having two different DDPs here. I feel like we don't really get a lot of DDP, so that's money for me there. Love this figure. I just can't say enough of how damn good this is. This is exactly what I wanted, and I love it. I love this so much, and it could be a good base for potentially other guys in skinny jeans and stuff like that. We'll have to see, but we also have a Stone Cold in black shorts. This is something I've been wanting for so long. I wish that the shorts were a little bit darker, but it's not that big of a deal. The like charcoal gray shorts with this Austin shirt 
is an attire of Austin I've been wanting for so many years. He's got the watch. And this is what I was talking about, man. I begged for Austin in shorts for so long, and they finally, finally have made it here. And they did say that the shirt's going to be different. It's not going to have that big square on it, so it should look a lot better on the shirt itself. So that'll be nice. Just so many fix-ups to make with this Austin. So I'm going to be copping this one every single time. Oh, man, looks so good. I'm so excited for this Austin. We also have a look at Mr. Perfect NWO version. He's got, he's got the guitar in there and everything. Got the hat. I know a lot of people are going to be looking forward to the Mr. Perfect figure. And we also have a re-release of the Elite 47 Boss Man in the Tactical Shield style gear in the black. Solid figure. One that I feel like a lot of people missed out on in Elite 47. So this is a good way to get this back in the line. I do wish they didn't re-release figures and the, you know, like don't use these sublines as, as re-releases, especially with so many damn greatest hits lines and legends lines and all these other re-release lines that we have. I'd like to see them introduce new looks for figures. But I do know in a lot of these, they're repaints anyway, so there's that. And then we do have the Build-A-Figure Commissioner HBK, which I like a lot. I like the turtleneck. I like the gray and everything. This is a great base for some other guys. So I do like that we're getting Shawn Michaels. They're using the screaming expression with the hat. And, you know, that brown suited version from back in the day with the flashback wave was never seen. So maybe they'll put that in the from the vault series because this figure right here, that figure was not seen by anybody. I haven't even, like, found one piece of that damn figure. So I know a lot of people do have it, but that's one that I never even glimpsed of. And then we do have the Build-A-Figure Disciple, which also looks really good. Great head sculpt, got the sunglasses, he's all jacked, got the vest in there. Very cool leg mold in this guy as well. I'm, I'm interested to see how he feels in hand and everything, but it looks like he's kind of using a different crotch piece, but the legs look to be the Muhammad Ali legs from the Referee Ultimate Edition, so we'll see what comes of that. We also have this Virgil figure. Now, I do believe Steve said something like at the end of the year or something, there's going to be like a surprise build a figure, and I, I want to say he was talking about this Virgil figure, so I don't know if this is going to be like a surprise or somewhere snuck in. I don't know exactly how this is going to work, but we do have Virgil here in the NWO, and I think this, is, this isn't this is just a normal Virgil Build-A-Figure. This is going to be something that's in the line somehow, so we'll have to see. This isn't a makeshift custom, so maybe, I don't know what he was talking about there, but we shall find out soon. You guys can see the pants are black and everything, so it's not the exact same as the, you know, British Bulldog with the Virgil, you know, from the Royal Rumble Elite set, so there's that. And then we're getting into the Legends figures last, man, and this is one of my favorite reveals too. We have an Elite Legends Kurt Angle now, I don't like that we're reusing the same smiling head sculpt. I'd like to see a new Kurt Angle head sculpt, but I do love that we're seeing the gray It's True, It's True shirt, a shirt from my childhood. I love this. I love the gear as well. Been waiting on more Kurt Angles. We still haven't gotten some of my favorite boots of all time. I, Kurt Angle has the best boots of all time. The red, white, and blue ones from Unforgiven 01, you know, that era of Kurt Angle. He wore them for years, but that is the boots that I want to see from Mattel, painted up nice and correct. But I don't know. I still love the Kurt Angle. I want more more Kurt Angles. There's so many to go around. They need to make Ultimates. They need to make these things. So hopefully we'll get some more Kurt Angles revealed to us at San Diego Comic-Con. And then we also have this Legends Hulk Hogan here with the American t-shirt. I like this head sculpt too. I like this I like this Hogan. I know it's kind of a redo, but you are getting a new shirt. You're getting a new bandana. I know the Hogan guys are going to be going crazy for this one. And I don't, I'm not the biggest Hogan guy ever, right? But I do like his figures and they are pretty toyetic. I like how bright they are and they look really good all up on a shelf next to each other. So this Hulk Hogan figure I like. I like the head sculpt and everything. So we'll see what comes of this Hogan as it comes out. And then we also have Farouk in the nation and we have a regular version and a Chase variant version. You know, they've been putting some different guys out. We got D'Lo, we got Kama. So now getting Farouk here and then we do have The Rock coming in the Monday Night Wars line. Pretty good there. Pretty good. I love this leather jacket too. This entrance robe or gi here that he's got. This fake leather looks really good on the figure and the hat. So I hope that we're going to be able to tell what the chase is and what the regular edition is. Because if he's wearing that robe or that entrance jacket in the packaging, it's going to be pretty much impossible to tell it, like which one's the chase and which one's the regular version. So hopefully that'll be easier. But I do like the likeness and everything to Farouk here. I like the head sculpt. And then we also have King Booker coming back. This is a re-release. Again, kind of similar to what I was talking about with Big Boss Man. Another re-release here, but it is. It's getting these older figures redone that have updated technology. So, I mean, I can see why, but I can also see why not. But I love these boots. I always like King Booker's boots or Booker T's bo boots. You can put those on Lashley. You can put those on Batista. You can put those on Lesnar. So you can make some really cool fix-ups here with King Booker. But this is one that I never obtained. I think it's Elite. It's elite, either Elite 14 or 17 King Booker. I think it's Elite 14 in the white. Looks really good. It'd be cool to come with a big gold too, but I don't think that's going to happen. And we also have Warlord here, another re-release. And there, it seems like they're putting a, a new Legends re-release in every single line. But this is one that I think a lot of people missed out on. I like how toyetic he is. I like the shoulder 
shoulder pads and some different cool, unique things going on with him here. And I always liked his boots. And I, I like this as a re-release, man. And then we also have IRS. Now, the pictures you're seeing here, these next few figures of IRS and Tugboat and Ultimate Warrior, they are kind of trash because of... Uh, I, I never got an image of these because they were re-releases. So I didn't get a good full image of them. I just have video. So I did get these crappy still shots of them. So I do, uh, I do apologize for these. But we are getting IRS re-release from Elite 40. We have Tugboat from Elite 44 getting re-released, and we do have the Ultimate Warrior that was originally in the Legends line, I do believe, with the Intercontinental Championship. All three used to be figures in the main line, and now they're getting re-released here in the Legends line with updated technology, which I would like to see. I need to do a whole video on this and see since re-releases started happening, how many re-releases have there been in the last three years? I would like to see how many elites and different figures across Mattel's history have been re-released over over the last three or four years. I think it would be an, a very interesting study to do. I may do that, but I think this is the last figure we have, man. We are finishing it up with Jim the Anvil Neidhart, the two-in-one Who figure that has the cloth goods, and then you can remove all the gear and put the mask on, which is a very cool thing. I think this is awesome. I know a lot of people, this popped a lot of people hard. Not my, you know, right up my alley, but I still think it's cool, and I didn't show off anything in this video that was something that we already knew about, you know? Everything that's in this video is something that is brand new or kind of an update so figures that we've already seen images of for a while now or things that you know I've already covered on the channel I did leave them out of this video because I've already talked about them and everything like that but we did have all of these figures man I mean we talked about almost 50 figures or so in this video that were that are coming and I wanted to get out get on here and cover all my thoughts I mean this video is gonna be damn near an hour this is gonna be possibly the longest news video that we've ever done on this channel and so it kind of you know dives into podcast realm man definitely want to do that I, I want to do that it's just something that I've been looking into and trying to figure out the ins and outs of so we will see man but a my damn toys podcast i think sounds pretty good man I, I don't know if it would be called my damn toys podcast or i think that would probably be the name of it mdtp possibly and then you know just because you you gotta have toys or wrestling or it's wrestling figures or something in the name because you know you gotta have people know exactly what it's about right so if you look up your youtube channel and it says my damn toys you're like oh it's gotta be to do something with action figures or toys right so i don't know Nonetheless, man, that is every single figure, every single thought, I think, to my knowledge. You know, I did my best. I've been sitting here a while. My voice is kind of parched. Need to take a sip of the Diet Doozy, of course. But I think that is pretty much going to wrap the video. I'd love to know all of your thoughts, man. Let me know what you think of these elites. Do you agree with me on my takes? Do you think that they're trash? Let me know all those things down in the comment section below, man. But I think that is pretty much going to wrap up this long, hour-long news video for you guys. So let me know what you think of all these figures down in the comment section below. What do you think of my thoughts? I'd love to know them, man. But follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys. And a huge shout-out to our Patreon army over there for the MDT YouTube channel, man. Appreciate all those fellas over there. You guys are absolute beasts. Never stop being you. You guys are awesome. But thank you guys so very much for watching. I'm getting out of here. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys later. Have a good one, and have a blessed day.